An anapaest is a metrical foot used in formal poetry. In classical quantitative meters it consists of two short syllables followed by a long one. In accentual stress meters it consists of two unstressed syllables followed by one stressed syllable. It may be seen as a reverse dactyl. This word comes from the Greek I plus or minus I one half I euro I plus or minus I to the first I florin I I I, anapastos, literally struck back, from ana and pastos, verbal of I euro I plus or minus I I micron I to the first I one half, poi into strike. Because of its length and the fact that it ends with a stressed syllable and so allows for strong rhymes, an apist can produce a very rolling verse, and allows for long lines with a great deal of internal complexity. Examples, Trimeter, here is an example from William Cooper's verse is supposed to be written by Alexander Selkirk, composed in an apistic trimeter, I must finish my journey alone, to trimeter. An example of an apistic tetrameter is the A visit from Street Nicholas by Clement Clark Moore, Twas the night before Christmas and all through the house, the following is from Byron's The Destruction of Sennacherib, the Assyrian came down like a wolf on the fold, and his cohorts were gleaming in purple and gold, and the sheen of their spears was like stars on the sea, when the blue wave rolls nightly. On Deep Galilee. Hexameter, an even more complex example comes from Yeats's The Wanderings of Oisin. He intersperses anapists and iams, using six foot lines. Since the anapist is already a long foot, this makes for very long lines. Fled foam underneath us and round us, a wandering and milky smoke, as high as the saddle girth, covering away from our glances the tide, and those that fled and that followed from the foam pale distance broke. The immortal desire of immortals we saw in their faces and sighed. The mixture of anapists and iams in this manner is most characteristic of late 19th century verse, particularly that of Algen and Charles Swinburne in poems such as The Triumph of Time and the Choruses from Atlanta in Caledon. Swinburne also wrote several poems in more or less straight anapists, with line lengths varying from 3 feet to 8 feet. However, the anapists' most common role in English verse is as a comic meter, the foot of the limerick, of Lewis Carroll's poem The Hunting of the Snark, Edward Lear's Nonsense Poems, T. S. Eliot's Book of Practical Cats, a number of Dr. Seuss stories, and innumerable other examples. Apart from their independent role, anapists are sometimes used as substitutions in iambic verse. In strict iambic pentameter, anapists are rare, but they are found with some frequency in freer versions of the iambic line, such as the verse of Shakespeare's last plays or the lyric poetry of the 19th century. References